The various types of lenses that we are going to learn to identify in this video are the spherical lens and the cylindrical lens also known as the astigmatic lens. The spherical lens is of two types. It is the convex spherical lens and the concave spherical lens. So we shall be studying about how to identify these lenses by various methods. First method is by feeling the lens which is called the tactile identification. Then we can also identify these lenses by looking for the presence or absence of distortion of the image. Lenses can also be identified by observing the movement of the image through the lens. The image size also helps us in identification of the lenses. Apart from these four steps, we are also going to learn how do we determine the axis of a cylindrical lens and the scissoring movement that happens through a cylindrical lens. First of all, let us talk about the tactile identification of the lenses. This is, this is in particularly useful thing when you are dealing with the spherical lenses. So a convex lens as we know is basically thicker at the center and thinner at the periphery. So whenever you are giving lenses, okay, you can actually try feeling the lenses and if you feel that the thickness of the lens is thicker at the central portion and thinner at the peripheral portion, then probably you are dealing with a convex lens. Whereas in a concave lens, the width or the thickness is less at the center and it is more at the periphery. So this is called tactile identification of the convex lens and the concave lens. Now this method of identification works better when you are dealing with the larger powers like plus 10 or plus 20. This might not work for lower power lenses for which you might have to use the other methods of identification. This cross is actually going to help us in lens identification. So you can either draw a, uh, draw a cross when you are trying to identify a lens and uh, look at this cross through the lenses or you can also use something uh, a linear uh, a linear object like grill of a window or a linear tube light something like that so here we are going to study about the distortion of the image place the lens first and look for the distortion and then we are going to go ahead and move the lens in various directions across the cross okay and as we move the lens across this cross we are going to see the movement of the image of this cross in which direction is the image moving and based on that we will identify the lens lens as we know has equal power in all the meridian and therefore when you're going to look at the cross through a spherical lens there will be no distortion of the cross so that's very important point second thing is that however if you're if you see any sort of distortion of the cross once you place the lens as can be seen in the second picture you can see that the cross seems to be uh, broken at this point okay so this is called distortion and this happens in case of astigmatic lenses okay now however if the axis of the cylinder or the astigmatic lens is actually aligned with the cross then you're not going to see any sort of distortion so that is very important point that you must remember now in this image you can see that i've placed an astigmatic lens or a cylindrical lens in such a way that the axis of the cylinder is not coinciding with these lines so here are the axis which is marked in white color and i'm marking it in red here so this axis uh, is not aligned with these horizontal lines and therefore when you're going to look at these horizontal lines through this cylindrical lens you are seeing this break in these lines which is called the distortion of the image or distortion of the lines however if you were to use a spherical lens these lines would actually appear straight and not distorted so if there is a distortion of the image it means that you are dealing with a cylindrical lens and if there is no distortion it means that you are dealing with a spherical lens when we are talking about a spherical lens by touching the lens and by 
uh, observing that there is no distortion you will come to a conclusion that you are probably dealing with a spherical lens but in spherical lens we know that there are two types of spherical lens one is a convex spherical lens and the other one is a concave spherical lens how do you actually differentiate between the two so the two can be actually differentiated based on the movement of the image and how are you going to make the image move by moving the lens okay so take that cross or take any linear object for that matter and the lens is going to be now placed on that object and moved from side to side and up and down along the arms of the cross and you will see that the image also seems to move now based on the direction of the movement of the image you can tell whether you are dealing with a convex lens or you are dealing with a concave lens now if you take a convex lens you are going to see that as you are moving the lens in the upward direction this arm is actually moving downwards right and if you are moving the lens in the downward direction this fragment of the cross is moving in the upward direction and therefore this movement is called a guest movement and this is seen in case of a convex lens so as you can see here as the lens moves down the image is moving upwards okay so this is called a guest motion and you can see it again as the lens goes down the image moves upward this is called a guest motion and seen in case of a convex lens so you can appreciate this in this uh, video as well as we are moving the object uh, that means as we're moving the lens the lens here is plus 20 diopter convex lens okay so i hope you observed it so as we are moving the lens across the arms horizontally and vertically you can see the image movement is actually in the opposite direction now what about the concave lens in concave lens you will observe that as you move the lens in upward direction the image of this cross has also moved upwards so here you're supposed to compare it with this with these arms which are outside that of the lens okay so therefore uh, that is the reason why i told you to look through a cross because sometimes what happens is that it becomes quite difficult to appreciate the movement whether the image is moving in the opposite direction or in the same direction so in such a situation if you use a cross observation becomes much more easier so here if you move the lens downwards the image also is moving downwards so as you can see here as the lens goes down the image also goes down so this is called with the motion and it is seen in case of a concave lens so you observe this video here we have a concave lens and you can see as you are moving the lens the image also is moving along with the lens okay so as you move the image left and right the lens left and right the image also moves left and right as the lens goes up and down the image also goes up and down now the question is what about a cylindrical lens so what about the movements that occur through a cylindrical lens now a spherical lens actually has same power along all the meridians and therefore you will see the same movement across all the meridians the it doesn't matter whether you are moving the spherical lens vertically or horizontally you are going to see similar sort of movement either it is against movement in convex lens or with movement in case of concave lens however when you deal with a cylinder we know that a cylinder has one axis and it has power across only one meridian right so if you move the lens across the axis of the cylinder there will be no movement and this is also one way in which you can identify the axis of the cylinder and the movement is going to be seen only across the meridian where the power is present so suppose this is the axis that is 90 degree and the power is present across 0 degree or 180 degree so if you are going to move the uh, if you are going to move the lens across this meridian horizontal meridian you will see some motion of the image but if you move the lens across this vertical meridian you will not see any movement of the image and that will tell you that this 90 degree is actually the axis of the lens so observe this very carefully
if you would remember that a, a plus lens which is called a convex lens will basically show you which kind of movement it will show you a against the motion movement okay now here in this image the axis is where the axis is at the 0 degrees or 180 degrees and the power is across the 90 degrees meridian so if you are going to move this lens in the up and downward direction that is across the 90 degree you will see that there is actually a movement of the image in the opposite direction however if you are moving it along the horizontal direction the cross is not moving it means that the axis is at 0 or 180 degrees okay so you can observe it very carefully in this video now similarly here what we have is a minus six diopter concave lens now in a concave lens what happens is that there is actually a width movement which occurs right moreover here there are marks on the lens which tells you that you are dealing with a cylinder now here the axis is in the opposite direction that is at the 90 degree and the power is at the horizontal axis so now just observe this video as you're moving the lens across the horizontal meridian okay you can see that there is a width movement but if you move the lens across the vertical meridian there is no movement of the cross what about the scissoring reflex now sometimes what happens is that uh, in cylinders okay when you place the cylinder on the cross you will see that there is some sort of distortion but if you rotate the cylinder at the cross you will see those axes they the cross uh, the arms of the cross will look as if they are coming closer to each other and then moving apart so such a movement of the cross or any object which has a linear components okay when looked through a cylindrical lens is called a scissoring reflex okay however if you take a spherical lens and you rotate first of all there will be no distortion through a spherical lens moreover if you rotate also the image will not change much the image movement will only occur if you actually move the lens in the upward direction or in the along the horizontal meridian or the vertical meridian but in case of a cylindrical lens if you rotate the lens also you are going to see some sort of scissoring motion so you can see over here in this image we have a cylindrical lens of plus six diopters okay and just look how as we rotate the lens you can see the image the image is not just distorted as you rotate it you can see how the, the arms are actually coming towards each other Now this is known as the scissoring reflex which is seen in the case of cylindrical lenses. Now if you look at this here we have the convex lenses and you can see convex lenses basically are magnifying lenses okay so they cause magnification of the image whereas a concave lens will basically cause minification of the image the same thing you can observe in this video as we introduced a convex lens you can see magnification of the letters and if we introduce a concave lens you can see that there is minification of the letters that's all for today i hope you enjoyed it thank you and have a nice day